This video is dedicated to my fellow Hunter mains out there. We make up the largest percentage of the Destiny player base and probably draw the most hate just for wearing our favorite pair of boots. One thing's for sure though, we're all united by our love for our deceased Vanguard leader, Cade6. RIP Cade, I hope you're enjoying some extra spicy ramen wherever you are. You're gonna live on forever in our hearts since you won't really be able to live on in-game anymore, at least not after the Forsaken campaign is sunset into the Destiny content vault. To help us all remember the legacy and fun times with Cade, here's 11 things that every Hunter main does. There's nothing more Cade than doing everything with style, like his epic entrance into the Prison of Elders. Every Hunter lives by the same mantra of fashion over function. Cade didn't just want to be the best at what he did, he also wanted to do it on his own terms with style. After all, what's more important, a cloak that perfectly matches your chest piece, or just some armor with a specific affinity and some RNG stat points? We all know the answer is the drip. To prove my point, think about how many hours you've spent swapping around your armor ornaments to get your new perfect look. Think about the waiting around you've done for the hunters on your fire team just changing their mods around just to inspect them and realize that they're picking out their favorite cloak. If hunters were able to carry a badge around like the rogue space cops that we pretend to be, the motto would be, fashion is the true endgame. If Cade was still around, he would be no different than every other hunter wearing Stompies 24-7. Not only do they shade really well and have some nice looking ornaments, but there's never really a bad time to have them on. In fact, you could easily make a case for them being the strongest hunter exotic in Destiny like my friends Drewski and Cool Guy recently stated. Stompies have become as tightly attached to the hunter class as every knife that the hunter carries. I almost never want to take them off because of how much better they make that moment to moment hunter gameplay. Extra slide distance, better jumps, faster movement than many of their roaming supers, and being able to easily outmaneuver other players are some of the best reasons why Stompies just never come off. Whether it's PvP or PvE, these jumpers always feel good to use. Sure, other exotics have some cool perks and playstyles, but zoom in is the hunter's way of life. Ultimately, until something changes with Stompies, there's really not a good enough reason to switch off of them for PvP. They provide so many benefits for free that no other hunter exotic can truly compare or replace the Stompies. And that brings up the next thing that every hunter main does, and this one's a little sad. Every hunter main knows that there's probably never going to be another exotic at the same levels that Stompies are at, at least not for a long time. If you really think about it, you know it's true. You know that if an exotic comes out giving as many benefits as Stompies, it's going to get nerfed into the ground. It always happens. It happened most recently with the Radiant Dance Machines. It's happened with the Orpheus Rigs. It happened with the Star Eater Scales. It happened with the Shards of Galanor, multiple times in fact. Not only do we know that the Hunter exotics are probably going to get nerfed if they're too powerful, we also know that the new exotics are probably going to be too niche and too obscure to be widely used. Look no further than the recent Bombardiers changes. On paper, those are some really cool improvements based on what subclass you're running, but in reality, they can all feel a little gimmicky. Ask any Hunter main and they'll tell you that they're looking forward to the new Hunter exotics, but they're not very optimistic because they're probably not going to be good for a long time. Fingers crossed that we're in for a great surprise in the Witch Queen. Sorry about the rant, but being a Hunter main means that you have to accept the good and the not so good when it comes to being a Hunter. But do you know that there's a really quick way to instantly know if there's another Hunter main on your fire team without even opening up the menus? Guaranteed, you're going to see that that player is constantly jumping around. Has anyone else noticed that Hunters act like they just drank too much advanced GG because they just never stop moving, ever? Hunters are always spam jumping around PvE encounters before they even start. They're always hopping around during the encounter even if they take more damage while they're in the air. It's like the floor is permanently lava in their brains. In PvP, every match has at least one Hunter that spends about half of the game in the air. Even in tight corridors, they're going to be smashing their heads against the ceiling to gain maximum speed. Someone should probably remind us to always wear a helmet in PvP. Hunters just never stop moving. Maybe it's because of Stompies making their movement feel too good, or maybe it's because of the rush you get from moving and just going so fast. Whatever the reason, I think Cade would approve. Real quick, if you're liking this video so far, make sure to hit the like button. I've heard that if it gets enough likes, a new Hunter Vanguard is going to get appointed. Speaking of doing everything fast, how about that Hunter dodge? Hunters are constantly dodging. Every Hunter main out there loves to dodge as often as possible, especially using the Gambler's Dodge. That's because you get your melee ability back pretty much for free. Some of you prefer to use the Marksman's Dodge to reload your weapons, and I've actually been trying that one out myself more after the dodge cooldown changes. What's sweeter in PvP than sliding into a lane, hitting your snipe, and then instantly dodging away? It just never gets old. Those are some of the moments when we all like to think that we're using our dodge the most. But let's be honest for a second, we're all Hunter mains here, right? We panic dodge a lot. Going to go grab some ammo and a bunch of ads spawn on top of you in PvE? Well, I better dodge. Get shot one time in a PvP duel? Well, better dodge so I can recover my health back. Get caught aping too hard with a shotgun? 
Well, just tap your dodge button and you'll slide real smooth into cover. It's basically an instant undo button. I'm surprised it's actually not bound to control Z on PC. But as Hunter mains, isn't it our right to dodge as often as we can? That's gotta be like the second Hunter motto behind Fashion is the True Endgame. ABD, always be dodging. So as a fellow Hunter, keep dodging as often as you can, even if Bungie keeps making it just a bit slower. But I don't need to tell you all of that, right? I mean, just look at Hunter's end game. I already see so many players maximizing their mobility stat. Even after the recent changes to the dodge, I still see a lot of Hunters prioritizing their mobility stat as highly as a recovery stat for PvP, if not even more. Some of that is no fault of our own. Hunter armor just seems like it wants to roll with mobility more than strength or discipline. The game is practically begging us to min-max for that optimal dodge uptime. But dodge is such a good ability, why not just have it available as often as we possibly can? While it doesn't break tracking on some things like the skip grenades or firebolt grenades anymore, it's still a great movement ability for getting out of situations that you should honestly probably be punished for. <clears throat> like when you overextend a bit too far, get shot a bunch, and then manage to somehow safely dodge back to behind cover. The combination of the jarring movement from the gambler's dodge plus the even more quick movement from the stomping jumps just gives hunters a really good advantage in duels, which top players use to leave lower skilled players dazed and confused. For console players out there, you know just how difficult this is to duel against, especially in close quarters unless you're running with a very high sensitivity to turn around quickly. Hunter mains know this well and they love to jump straight over your head with their maxed out mobility. And you know what hunter mains love to do most just after jumping straight into the air? Well, besides aping you with a shotgun, of course. They love to shatter dive. Even after the shatter dive's recent nerfs, you're still gonna see a lot of hunters shatter diving every chance they get. Around corners? Shatter dive. In congested hallways? Shatter dive. Wide open areas with the entire team holding hands? Well, you better believe that shatter dive is about to happen. Obviously, it's the titans who are the gorilla class that eat crayons and dash headfirst into danger, but hunters do their fair share of it as well thanks to our precious crystals that are just begging to be smashed. As someone that took many months of rehabilitation to stop shatter diving constantly after Beyond Light, I know how hard it can be to form new habits. Even in PvE, it's just so tempting to shatter dive every single wave of ads that pop up. And if we're being honest, it's a habit that many of us need to break, but it's just so fun. Now shifting to a more serious topic, what's up with Hunters and Endgame PvE for a really long time now? Because it kinda sucks that every Hunter main feels the need to swap to either a Warlock or a Titan for more serious PvE content. Unless you have a dedicated group of friends or you get lucky and join an LFG group that doesn't mind you playing on Hunter, you're not going to get invited that often. You're going to be missing out on a lot of group activities. There are really very few options for Hunters outside of the Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun and the Omnioculus Night Stalker. If it wasn't for us being the clutch Invis Medic and Grandmaster Nightfalls, I don't think that the Titans and Warlocks would even want to play with us at all. Really, it seems like Warlocks have the most diverse build variety with Well of Radiance, the Stasis Turrets, Chaos Reach, and even Nova Bomb with some decent damage and survivability with Devour. Titans on the other hand are pretty tied to their Ursa Furiosa Banner Shields, the Ward of Dawn Bubbles, and the Middle Tree Missiles while wearing their fancy chest piece. Compare those options though to what the Hunter has. It would sure be nice to have a little bit more flexibility for endgame PvE. I think that Void 3.0 launching with the Witch Queen expansion might help us out a little bit since the Night Stalker has always been the Hunter subclass most focused on being the team player in PvE. But this one is a problem that Hunters have been living with for a very long time now, so my confidence that we're going to become useful again someday is a little bit shaky. Maybe I just missed the good old days of everyone wanting that Celestial Nighthawk Hunter for their fire team. The easy answer would be to give Hunters something as powerful as a Well of Radiance or Word of Dawn, but having more supers at that level might not be what's best for the game overall. It's a tough problem for Bungie to solve, but it really does need to happen. Not only does it suck for Hunter mains to almost always be pressured to play a different class, but we all have the same prayer that just hasn't been answered yet. That moment that we have to swap off of our Hunter, we're all thinking the same thing. We're hoping for some better utility with the Hunter PvE subclasses. A lot of us remember time when the Hunter PvE subclasses were actually pretty good. When Blade Barrage first came out with Forsaken, it was an awesome wave clear subclass. You could clear an entire room with the super and then get your super right back if you ran shards of Galanor. But there were also some really fun builds where you could clear an entire wave of enemies just by throwing those knives on repeat. Some of the real OG hunters will remember when Arstrider was actually a pretty good boss DPS option. Or having a Night Stark on the team for Argos at the end of the Eater of Worlds raid layer, which made it so much easier for the team to just spam supers for DPS. Maybe you're a lucky hunter with friends who don't make you swap off of hunter for another class. But I think that pretty much every hunter out there has hoped for a better PvE subclass for quite a while now. Or at least something that's more fun than just running Celestial Nighthawk for the 2 seconds you get to shoot your golden gun shot. I know that some hunter mains out there may not have been wanting to hear these last two because that means that their favorite class maybe isn't the best, 
but since there's no dislikes on this video, I'm going to just assume that we're all in agreement so far. These last two are just for fun. Stompies are fantastic, and I personally almost never take them off, but I do have to carry on at least one pair of legendary boots at all times. That's so I can swap over to the one exotic that I feel like I always need to have but hardly ever use. I'm talking about the Celestial Nighthawk. If you made it this far into the video, I bet a lot of you are waiting to see where this was going to end up on the list, because it's the one exotic that pretty much every PvE player will tell you that you just need to have. There's just so much charm seeing that boss's health bar drop suddenly from a Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun shot. It's one of the few moments in PvE where I feel like I'm making a noticeably significant impact with my subclass. Since the shot comes out instantly, it's also great for pairing with some really strong PvE weapon combos for boss DPS. That's really the biggest thing that I truly miss from the nerfed Hunter PvE subclasses over the years. That moment of damn, I'm awesome, and that thing I did was just amazing. It makes me really glad that at least the Celestial Nighthawk hasn't yet been nerfed into obscurity. I'd love to see more exotics have an impact like that in PvE. The Star Eater boots had their time in the sun for a very short while, but those were quickly nerfed. One of the coolest weapons ever added to Destiny 2 for Hunter was when they added the Hunter-specific swords that made you feel like a samurai. You know the one I'm talking about, the Quick Fang. The way you wielded that thing on your back made it feel like you're a ninja dashing around to slay any guardian or enemy in front of you. Not only does it get a chuckle out of me every time I see a hunter buddy larping around like a ninja, it also adds a lot to that moment to moment combat that I mentioned was missing with the Nighthawk. It doesn't actually make you more powerful, but I'd be lying if I said that it doesn't make you feel more powerful. It's one of those nice touches that Bungie's added to the game that really flies under the radar for how cool they actually are. And now we have an even more special sword that lets us fly around at Mach 10 speeds across the map. These were 11 things that I see every Hunter main do, but let me know which ones would you add to this list. I'm really looking forward to reading the comments on this one. If you like this video, you'll also like the 19 things that every Destiny player hates. It's the video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.